I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the concept of ethical investing in this video. Um, I guess most advisors would correctly ask any new clients or any, any client that they're dealing with um, about their age, about their financial situation, about their investment objectives, they'd establish their attitude to risk. I don't know how many advisors would actually ask their clients um, if they had any ethical considerations when they were investing. But perhaps it's something advisors should be considering a little bit more carefully now. I really think a lot of clients welcome the opportunity to invest ethically. Um, some of the evidence for this is the growth in ethical, um, green, environmental or social impact investments. We can we can put them all in one bucket, but there's been a large growth of these on direct-to-consumer platforms, particularly crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending and, and these kind of new concepts. I think advisors would be misguided to ignore that. If advisors ignore that, um, firstly they're going to miss out on business. Secondly, it's probably a bad thing for the consumer as well because they may well be investing in an, in an ethical way that makes them feel good and they're engaged with, but they, they may not be investing in a way that is um, commensurate with their attitude to risk or is working towards their financial objectives or is part of an overall financial plan. So I think it's important for advisors to be involved. Um, I think it's business for advisors, but I think it also means they can help protect their clients from making mistakes. The other big reason for advisors to be involved is I think it helps improve client retention. By going to clients with ethical investments that they are engaged with, um, that's something that's going to be much more engaging for the client and help improve client retention. Um, the ethical investment landscape has changed quite a lot over the last few years. Previously, ethical investing was really based around a negative screen. So you would invest in a normal way, but you would screen out companies you disagreed with. Um, companies like tobacco, arms manufacturers, gambling. So it was a negative screen. That changed to um, a positive screen. So positively investing in companies that either had um, a, a good social or environmental agenda, or even if they didn't, Perhaps using your influence as an investor, so the, the fund manager may have a seat on the board or some influence with the board, to try and influence them to improve their, their social and environmental agendas. The new concept that we have today is impact investing. And this is investing for a financial return, but investing in something that's going to have a measurable social or environmental benefit on top of the financial return. A good example of this is Abundance Generation. I have to declare an interest here. Intelligent Partnership helped distribute Abundance Generation through the advisor community. But it's an investment into UK-based renewable energy projects, pays very good returns based on government feed-in tariffs, but obviously you can see just how much renewable energy is being generated once these projects are complete and up and running. So there's a measurable environmental benefit. Another example would be, um, it's a well-studied example actually, it was a, a social investment bond based in Peterborough. And this was all based around reducing re-offending rates. So for people who had just come out of prison, making sure that they didn't go back into prison. And you might question how you're able to generate a financial return from that. Um, but it wasn't that complicated actually. For every thousand pounds that was invested, £800 would be going into a very safe bond um, that was lent to a housing association. So it still touched on the, the, the sort of social idea, but it was a very safe investment and that would ensure your return of capital. The remainder, the other £200, was given to a not-for-profit company that was working with offenders to reduce offending rates. And how that worked was they could measure how many, how much they'd reduced the reoffending rate by, and of course that presented a saving for the local authority because these guys didn't go back through the court system and they didn't end up 
back in prison, which has a cost to the, uh, to the states. So there's a measurable saving, and a portion of that saving was passed back to the not-for-profit company and then used to pay a return to the investors. So it is possible to create these structures where there is a measurable social benefit and a financial return for investors. Um, another way to think about it these days is in terms of three different pots. Um, traditionally, of course, you would have your investment pot, which is where you're investing to try and, and grow your own money. And you might have a philanthropy pot, or you know, philanthropy sounds like something you'd associate with high net worth individuals, but a lot of people would donate money to charity, perhaps not on a, on a sort of um, organised basis, but certainly a certain amount every year. So traditionally you'd have your investment pot over here and your philanthropy pot over here. Impact investing would be somewhere in the middle. So you're still getting a financial return, so you're still getting that element that you have from the investment pot, but you're also doing some social or environmental benefit with your money. So that side of it is linked to the philanthropy pot. So that's another way of looking at impact investing. It's a third pot of money. Um, this table is another way of looking at and thinking about ethical investing. Um, it sort of runs from left to right, starting with classic investing, which is really just about profit maximization, no other considerations. And then it runs through the idea of responsible investing, where you have environmental and social governance considerations. Um, you may screen out companies that you think um, don't have um, ESG consideration at their heart. Then it goes through sustainable investing and thematic investing, um, which is getting much closer to the idea of impact investing, where you're looking to deliberately place money um, according to themes or into companies where we're going to see um, not just financial return but um, environmental and social benefits as well. Then they trip over into impact investing um, where really they're going to maximise the social and environmental benefits um, and that may result in a financial trade-off so they'll accept that that may have lower returns and that's a trade-off they make in exchange for a, a bigger social or environmental impact. And then they finish on the right-hand side with straightforward philanthropy, which is giving to social and environmental causes without any regard for financial return at all. So from this perspective, there's a whole, pers whole spectrum of ethical investments that can be made, running from not having any ethical consideration at all to ha not having any financial consideration at all. Now I imagine most people wouldn't want to be at either extreme, they'd want to sit somewhere in the middle of this chart. Um, finally to conclude, there probably is a perception out there that ethical investing means sacrificing some level of return, um, but that's not actually true. Um, the stats on this slide are from Money Facts, they were produced in August this year, August 2013. Um, and it actually shows that ethical funds over one and three years have outperformed traditional funds. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to sacrifice returns to invest ethically. There's also other financial benefits. Um, I'm going to talk about abundance again. Um, but that's an investment that gives you market level returns. Um, the returns are linked to inflation, so it's a great inflation hedge. It's a great diversifier because it's not connected in any way to the, the major public markets. So there are real financial benefits with that investment, regardless of whether you have any interest in the, the ethical and environmental side of it. So ethical investing today doesn't really have to mean that you're going to sacrifice returns at all. If you're interested in ethical or social impact investing, we're developing a, a range of materials to support you with that. We have some training courses available either online or face to face. And of course we have the abundance generation investment that we're distributing. And if you'd like to find out more about that or anything else that we've talked about in this video, then just contact us via our website.